I'll call them. Thank you. I'll call the school building committee meeting to order. Uh, the first item on our agenda is the approval of the June 8 minutes. Is there a motion regarding the June 8 minutes? Kathy? Oh, I oh. read them. Oh, you can, abst you can abstain if you like. Okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, Chris McNamara made a motion. Okay, thanks. Uh, is there a second? Mary, thank you. Any corrections? Then all in favor of approving the minutes, please indicate. And any opposed or abstentions? And Kathy will abstain. Um, that brings us to the opportunity for public input. Is there anybody that would like to address the committee? Seeing none, we'll move on. Uh, superintendent update. Yes, uh, just uh, a, uh, a shout out of uh, gratitude for the ribbon cutting ceremony. Thank you for the, all those who uh, attended. It was an amazing uh, Friday morning event. Uh, I think we were all super impressed with our students who uh, remained quiet and engaged. Um, and then the Saturday event was just lovely. It was the right combination of food and fun. And we had the Empire family band playing and uh, the amount of tours and um, town agencies that were showing up to set up a table. Uh, there was just a lot of wows and thank goodness and gratitude. Um, we had so many families just coming through the building, just so impressed. Um, so lovely. Uh, we had our last day of school. And because we just opened up, um, I told the teachers that they could literally walk out of their classrooms. They don't have to pack or move or cover anything. Um, and it's it's amazing because I was just in the building uh, today and you would not know it's summer. You know, sometimes schools look sad uh, on the last day of school because all the papers and lockers and things get cleaned out. Uh, there's none of that. Uh, and so there's some cleaning activity going on, but uh, we could open up tomorrow for the next school year. Uh, and so kudos to all that that helped, but certainly a shout out to our staff uh, that's over there. And then just a couple of follow-ups as we start to migrate from school building committee to building ownership and operations. Just wanted to let uh, people know that we've already started to look into uh, shade um, stands and, and things like that to start thinking about how we can best create shade for staff uh, during recess and playground. Uh, and I don't know if we'll be able to talk about this in detail, but also just looking at the color of the rubberized surface, trying our best to uh, take the feedback from Rich and, and staff that were out there in our soft opening. And while we have a chance to make some changes, we're going to. But thank you. Okay. Any questions for the superintendent? Mayor, uh, Tony? Uh, I, th I think that uh, while we're talking about the opening ceremony, we ought to give Randy, a special thanks for suggesting the Go Tigers motif. Um, I was watching, and every time the kids got a little restless, somebody said Go Tigers, and it worked beautifully. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Are they a little more well, engaged? I'm, losing the, I'm going to start doing it here at these meetings, too. Yeah. Do the university students do that? If you say Go Huskies? Well, no, I can just throw things at them. <laughs> All right. Um, thank you, Peter. Um, so that brings us in contractor architect OPM update. Um, maybe Adam, I, you want to kind of kick it off? We've got Brian here as well. If there's uh, things he wants to, to uh, add or report. Yeah, I think I'll uh, take the oh, lead. Scott. Right All right. Scott, Scott Palman from College. This evening, everyone. Um, so real quick update, and then I'll let uh, Adam fill in some of the, the gaps. Uh, we had no AC meeting this morning. Um, there, um, you know, a number of uh, portions of the corrective work is going to be weather dependent. If you've seen the weather, uh, a lot of thunderstorms predicted. So uh, some of the corrective work includes uh, finishing up striping, uh, repouring the ramp. And as Peter alluded to, uh, some of the playground work, uh, not only with cleaning up and, and, and doing some corrective action there, but installing the rubberized surface and the the design team is looking at a lighter rubber surface um, that'll be a little bit cooler for the kids. So uh, that was a, a good coordination effort. There'll be a field visit um, that Richard and his staff are coordinating uh, along with town staff and Newfield. 
next Tuesday to review the detention pond. We did talk about that in this morning's meeting, some of the corrective work. Uh, we felt it'd be very important to get all parties involved out there physically in person and just talk about the process and sequencing of that, uh, that repair work. Uh, at the same time, that uh, group is also going to look at the grass establishment uh, all around the site, uh, talk about the turf establishment, uh, see the status of that, uh, as well as take a look at the, there has been some question on the warning track around field three. Randy and I walked that after the meeting. They're going to take a look at that um, as well. Um, in addition to this morning's OIC meeting, there was a commissioning meeting. Uh, there was a, a good deal of discussion uh, now that the building management system, a lot of the recording uh, software and equipment is, is on so we can start tracking energy usage. Uh, there was quite a bit of discussions on uh, connected loads, uh, some of the um, loads specifically in the kitchen area, which appeared to be high, but uh, I think there may be a way to uh, look at control sequencing of some of the, uh, the, the uh, kitchen loads. Um, and reduce that slightly. Uh, there was also uh, discussions and there's gonna be some additional work done on the sequencing of the two well pumps um, to just make sure that those are functioning and operating um, as the architect specified, uh, just to make sure that uh, the water tank uh, remains up to its, uh, its design level for, uh, for water level. Um, that's a real high level. I'll, I'll stop here and see if there's any questions. And if not, maybe we'll let Adam fill in a few of the gaps. Steve? Do we have an update on the dishwasher situation? Yeah, I believe in, in Adam, I think you've been following this one a little bit more closely, so I don't misspeak. I'll let you respond. Yes, uh, so according with um with the Ben from Newfield, uh, they're still getting the shop drawings from the manufacturer themselves about the alternative uh, conveyor system, as well as the, the adjustment to the fix. Um, so that uh, uh, once that's in, the designer will review that um, and coordinate as well with uh, with Mariah, the food service director, to get that installed. So that, that still hasn't been received yet from the manufacturer in terms of the alternative conveyor system. So it's an alternative conveyor rather slightly different conveyor system for the, the basket. Right, so they're not, they're not looking to try to fix it because it's been tried to fix, it didn't work. So uh, the meeting with uh, the food service designer and the, and the vendor and the manufacturer on site a couple of weeks ago, um, the, the suggestion was that it was a, an alternative, I'm gonna misspeak a little bit here, but rather than be one type of system, it's a roller system or something to that effect. So that's what the alternative uh, initial suggestion was from the manufacturer, but they need to actually spec it, size it, review it to make sure it fits, and then, uh, provided on site. Uh, Chris McNabal. Hey, Adam, um, is there an update on that pass through door situation in the kitchen? Yep, that's the other um, the other component that's with a, with a different manufacturer. Uh, my last conversation with, uh, with Ben at Newfield indicated they were reviewing to see if there's a way to tweak the mechanism because it's kind of like a dumb waiter system where it offsets the weight of the uh, of the actual panel, um, but they need to, to look to see if it actually could be adjusted. Um, if it couldn't be adjusted further, then there's, that door isn't going to work for reaching over and trying to lift it up, in which case uh, the process would be, or the suggested process was taking back the product, providing a, a credit, and then getting a different door system in place, maybe with a handle on the outside, maybe something to that effect. But um, they're first looking to see if that happens. Satisfying okay. as is. Um, and then I had another question, if I can. Um, sure, go ahead. Uh, the stone wall cap, I thought it was kind of wild that we were going to ask Newfield to go back and install the one that they had spec'd. Did, we're not doing that, are we? Yeah, our, our understanding this morning, Chris, from the meeting is that the, um, the, the contractor has a, a stone cap uh, that they feel is going to meet the, the requirements of the architect. What I asked is if they could get samples of that physically with the design team being on site next Tuesday. I said, I, I don't want to see a shop drawing. Let's just get the samples on site. Let the architect review the physical samples and move forward. So um, that's the intent. Newfield's going to do their best to get some stone samples for the cap out to the site by Tuesday. Thank you. Ryan, acoustic panels in the cafe. Any more updates there? We have update on the acoustic. 
uh, situation. Yeah, uh, Richard had provided and uh, Jeff had provided a um, the analysis with um, uh, or the potential um, what the analysis might be. Um, that's something that uh, we're uh, Randy and I are still reviewing off offline to determine what the, the next appropriate step is in that regard. So, Randy, maybe we um, we touch bakes uh, later this week or, or tomorrow, I guess, or, or next week on that. Oh, so we've okay. So without it maybe being too specific, we have an analysis that's complete with conclusions. We're just not no, 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 no. As a proposal to do an analysis for an additional oh, proposal fee. to do okay. I understand. Yeah. And the analysis is of what? The the cafeteria to determine what additional uh acoustic provisions could be provided to lower the sound in that cafe area. So whether it be additional baffles or things on the walls or furniture or whatever. Did we ever get to to the bottom of or understand better about the painting of them, or whether that was done, what done to spec? What's going on there? Is that a dead end? The current panels, painting of the current panels. Anybody? I believe that was part of Mark Reber's proposal when he does his analysis was to check all that as well. Oh, okay. So that has not been officially checked. Okay. No. no, they were they were painted. Kathy. I'm just curious on uh, the, the kitchen issues and the acoustics. Is there a time frame? We are gonna have this all completed by the time yeah. kids go back, right? Right? Yeah, we have it. That's the anticipated schedule, yes. Okay, thank you. Yes, Brian. Uh, our building, our director of building, Mike Ninto, uh, I'm trying to recall now if he said the work had been done or if he was just made aware that it was about to be done, but where are we at with the um, the sort of entrance threshold issue off the gym and the, and the rework of that? Again, um, that's weather dependent. Um, they're you know prepared to re-pour that on the exterior, but um, they need to make sure that they've got a window where it's appropriate to pour the new concrete. And is that window, I mean, is that like a, a one day project, like it's all done one day or is it more complicated? I, I defer to Newfield on that. I would think they would probably demolish it, form it probably in, in, in one day, whether they could pour it the same day or not. It's a very small area. Um, if not one day, probably two days. Yeah, Brian, do you want to? Yeah, it, it's probably two days, um, and then we may need to get a carpenter back a third day just to reset the threshold um, and make sure everything's set. But uh, yeah, no more than two to three days. We're anticipating later next week, but as Collier's has said, it's kind of weather dependent, so have to play it by ear. Thank you. Hey. Um... I don't know, Scott or Adam or, or Brian, do you have other things you want to report to the committee? Yeah, just to keep you abreast of where we're at, uh, the pavement corrections were handled today, uh, the, the vast majority of them. Uh, the infrared plate was there. Work looks much better. Um, we'll go back out and check if there was any line striping that was disrupted during this. Um, it will be restriped uh, probably within the next two weeks. Um, Topsoil insulation in the planters out back at the outdoor uh, learning area started this afternoon. Um, I don't know if they're complete, but they will be in the next day or so. Uh, we're trying to pin down Monday or Tuesday to have a vac truck on site uh, to start the wood chip removal uh, first in the pre-K area playground um, and then move into the larger playground. So once that's confirmed and we have a schedule, we'll work with Bill and his team because we'll obviously need to shut those down uh, to the public. Uh, for a two to three week period while that work is being done um, and the board in place is in and then the chips are back in. Um, let's see, line striping at the basketball court. Um, I met with BB after our meeting this morning. They're hoping within the next two weeks. Um, the contractor they have doing that work um, is finishing up a large project, hopefully by the end of next week. So I think they're looking at uh, possibly the week of the 4th, uh, July 4th, to be out to do that work. Uh, but as soon as we know, we'll pass it along. Um, 
We talked about the gym door, the wood ceiling, uh, felt adjustments, and some door hardware adjustments um, should hopefully be taking place later next week. We're working with the contractors to get uh, a couple carpenters out there uh, qualified to do all the work. Um, and then they, the school had requested uh, some hardware, um, I guess, lesson uh, for lack of a better term, um, if, if they want to make some adjustments. So we're prepared to get a hardware guy out there to go through that with them. Um, and then uh, probably the next next biggest uh, major thing is just to wrap up the um, curbing and anything related to the DOT work um, out front where the uh, temporary entrance and the trailers were. Uh, we hope to have that done within the next two to three weeks as well. Peter and then Chris. Yeah, just uh, wondering about the timeline between the wood chip removal and the rubberized surface and what how long does it take to install the rubberized surface uh, and when would it be ready to open up to the general public? In talking with um, the contractor, they're gonna need probably a two week duration to do both locations from the time that they mobilize to set up and form um, and then mix and pour. So it'll be, you know, a week, week from pre-K um, and then a week for the larger one. Uh, then after that, once it's set, we can go back in and fill with uh, wood chips. So you're looking at probably a two week duration, Peter. So uh, is it already scheduled to align with the removal of the wood chips or will there be a gap between wood chip removal and waiting for the rubberized surface folks to move? There's in? most likely gonna be a gap because even after you remove the wood chips, we have to haul in and install the processed sub base, get it compacted and get it back to subgrade, uh, the correct subgrade. Um, in order to do the port in place. So the, the sequence is the chips get vacked out, uh, BB reinstalls all the process, gets it rolled and compacted. Uh, then at that point, the green light can be given to the port in place contractor to come in. Um, so start to finish, you're probably more like three weeks. And we're confident this can be done in July? By yes. the end of July? Okay. Yep. All right. So summer school starts July 10. Yes. So you're going to have. We'll be playing in the one. woods. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, yeah. Brian, what's the status um, of the playground? The law, I mean, the, the field, the large field beyond the playground. Beyond. Condition, status, whatever. Um, still needs to be touched up. There's a pile of two piles of junk out there that BB is uh, going to slowly start hauling out of there over the next few days. Uh, there's a pile of topsoil that's. Uh, being taken apart now to fill the planters and to uh, back any curbs, clean anything up punch list wise. Um, and then they actually need to kind of work their way out. And then the landscaper will come back and top dress anything. Um, you know, I, th I think we'll review the uh, turf establishment and anything else Scott had mentioned next week when we're out there. But I think we all knew that area probably wasn't going to be done um, till later this summer. Thanks. Any other, yeah, Ryan? Just just curious, um, I know from years and years ago doing summer work landscaping that sometimes things just take time to kind of fully uh, achieve the desired result. But I guess just, you know, having been to the building several times, sometimes for after hours functions, kids functions and stuff and, and looking at the grass out in front, um, you know, I know, again, it's still kind of, fresh and it is green, but the soil kind of seems a little marginal, um, almost like like a subsoil kind of quality and the grass doesn't seem super hardy. So I just didn't know if somebody who is an expert in that area, have we, have we examined that? Do we have any concerns about how that's establishing? I'll take that question. So um, good evening, everyone. Um, I'm going to be on the site on Tuesday, and I've invited um, um, Gary Guimond from Richter and Segan to look at a number of things, including um, the grassy areas, the uh, warning track in the ball field that you heard Scott mention a little while ago. Um, I'm also expecting Jay O'Keefe be there from Parks and Rec. I know he has similar kinds of concerns, so I want to make sure that he puts eyes on these things as well. I'm gonna ask Gary for his opinion about exactly what you just said, Ryan, and if he would recommend some supplemental work or some testing of the soils, uh, I'll get back to you on what his observations are. 
Thank you. Okay. Any other questions for Brian? Okay, uh, and then um, I don't know who to go to next. I don't know, Jeff or Richard, if you have other things you wanna to report to the committee. Um, I'll go first uh, and then Jeff can follow if I forgot anything. Actually, a lot of the things that I was gonna report has already been reported by um, Scott and Adam and Brian. So uh, the only thing I would like to add is that um, our meeting on Tuesday at the site will also include Buston O'Neill, Ron Bomagin attended the job meeting this morning, and he is going to come to the site on Tuesday so that we can actually look at the conditions in the retention uh, basin and have a conversation with Newfield and whatever subcontractor uh, they bring so we can talk about the activity that needs to occur in the retention basin to get it to perform to everybody's satisfaction. Uh, Scott mentioned the uh, wells. Um, we asked our well consultant to review the submittal. Uh, he did. He made a comment about the sequence of operations. So hopefully that can be addressed uh, by Newfield's subcontractors. I'll take a look at the sample stone cap. Both Jeff and I will look at that if that's delivered on Tuesday for our review. I did take a peek at the requisition that you have. Uh, from Newfield, I believe it's requisition number 26. And I was kind of surprised to see that it was requisition number 26. Um, but that amount that's being requested is uh, roughly $147,000 that still leaves over 1.6 million in work to be done and retainage. So you are still holding quite a bit of money um, on this project. Uh, I have. Um, no doubt that will cover whatever needs to be done uh, on the project. Uh, the next job meeting, I believe, is on July the 13th. I expect to be there for that meeting. Um, and I think job meetings are going to be scheduled maybe two or three weeks apart going forward. Um, we had originally started, you recall, much more frequent, and they're just not necessary at this point. Um, that's all I wanted to report from TSKP's standpoint. Jeff, did I leave anything out? No, I think everything was covered between you and Scott and Adam. Any questions? Chris? You know, I asked a while back about um, having a handicap accessible entrance at the front of the building somewhere around the covered um, area. And I know we've gone back and forth a couple of times about that. Um, I still feel strongly about it. I, I don't want to waste time, but um, I've observed the buses now on a couple of occasions, not coming anywhere close to the curb to drop off students. So the whole idea of a curb there is almost superfluous to what needs to happen. And um, I know there's a, 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 Adam and I spoke about how there's a, a, a curve we have to deal with and um, having to be meet meet code and all that stuff, but I, I, I still believe we can do it in, in some way without having to redo the whole front of the school. Um, and um, I, my last understanding was that the building official thought it would be unconventional. And um, I, I don't believe I agree with that. Um, uh, I think there could be ways to make it more conventional. I'm not sure what his, his um, concern was. Take out the entire curb then uh, and uh, rebuild the sidewalk. Uh, I, you know, I don't wanna go to such a, an extreme, but um, I think there's a way to do it. And um, I wonder if there's any appetite to look at that any farther. Uh, well, uh, I would look to the committee for direction on that. Uh, we did have our consultants look at that question. I believe the conclusion that they came to was that it was just not an easy practical fix. Um, and so that's that's where we stand right at, right at this moment. Um, do we want to continue exploring this as a possibility? I think it's going to be different, difficult. Um, I, I look to the committee for, for direction on this. The, the bottom line question for me is, what's in the best interests of the kids and the community? Do we need to have that there? Um, we need to answer that question before 
we wrangle with, can we afford it? How are we going to do it? Is it, is it necessary? If you ask my opinion, that it's not necessary. And if you ask somebody who uses a wheelchair, I think you get a different response. Um, the, the, pro the problem I see is that we designed a building that doesn't have a main entrance that can accommodate a person going in in a covered way that uses a wheelchair. They have to go to the parent drop-off, travel quite a distance before they get to the covered area. Um, and we all know in inclement weather, especially snow and ice, that's a tricky proposition if you're using a wheelchair or if you have impaired walking in any way, um, you're going to you're going to run into some some uh, issues. Um, that's understandable, Chris, um, but I know that the bus loop. Uh, we're in intentionally trying to keep the cars separate from the buses, and if anybody was coming that needed that access, they'd be coming with a lift probably on a van or on the bus itself. So that would just, uh, what we were talking about with Gary at the site and the building inspector was that they would just simply drop right on top of the curb. Uh, there shouldn't be anybody really in that bus loop. Um, I'm not so much talking about the students, Jeff. I'm talking about the community that may use uh, the, um, the building, uh, parents of students who may be using wheelchairs, other family members that may be coming to events using wheelchairs. Um, no, I get that. I think that when we were there meeting, I think at the end of the exhausted meeting, and there's quite a few people that showed up for this meeting from the town. And I think the consensus was that no matter where we placed this thing, it was across slopes. And then if we did shift it one way or the other, there's a, there's a colonnade that's going to be in the way. Um, so it just, it just felt like it wasn't, we weren't able to actually get a set of drawings and package for the building inspector that he could sign off on that would be compliant. So, and believe me, we tried everything. I mean, we're out there with levels. We were sketching out different scenarios, you know, maybe not even thinking about the landing as a landing, but maybe the sidewalk itself is a landing. So, I mean, I, I don't know what to do at this point. So, Jeff, are you saying it, it can't be done after everybody looked at that or? Yeah, that's that's what the consensus was. And the building inspector said, look, I, it's highly doubtful, but if you show me something that's compliant, I'll have no choice but to approve it. Gary doesn't think we can do that. Can we build a covered area on the parent drop off section to that back door or side door, whatever it's called? Again, I look to the committee for that. If that is uh, something that the committee chooses to do, to add a canopy in an area, that's it's your call. Well, um, I don't want to be the only voice on this, uh, but it's unfortunate that it's kind of an afterthought, I guess. Randy, can we uh, at least explore what the, it, something like a canopy would cost? I mean, that's yeah. I mean, we can we can look into that. I mean, it's not going to be a reimbursable item, I assume, at this point. Um, Why is that? Uh, well, it, it again, it, it's hard for us to speak for OSCGNR in the past. The way they've looked at these types of additions later in the game is, oh, well, you had money, and so you added this additional feature, and, and I'm not commenting, Chris, whether it, it should have or shouldn't have been in. I'm just letting you know what the dialogue has been in the past, and they say, if you really needed it, it should have been in the original design. So I, I'm not saying that's how they would react. Certainly, we could submit something, absolutely, if, if it went forward. Um, you know, I mean, I think it's, it's again, paramount to try and close this project out as well. So whether something would be done through the current contract or whether something might be pursued under a different uh, delivery method would, would also have to be discussed. Anybody else got wisdom on this, <laughs> Ryan? Um, 
I guess it's a question for for Chris. So when it comes to the um, the parent, the entrance closest to parent drop off, when you say the community, use of the community, Chris, are you talking about like af outside of school hours or kind of all of the above? I'm thinking of parents and grandparents that might be coming to a school function, uh, or if there are other community members that are going to use the school for functions, um, especially in the winter time, I guess is my main thought, um, that there's a way for them to safely uh, get into the building. Because um, the other, you know, the, the turnaround on this, the other side, the flip side of this is we don't provide that and something happens and then we're dealing with a property claim, liability claim, because we didn't provide any way for someone to get into the building safely. Um, let's say it's at night, let's say there's no maintenance staff there and it's continued to be, you know, uh, inclement weather and maybe additional sanding could have been needed or I don't know. Um, but I mean, it's, it's what I do for a living, working with people with disabilities and I see all kinds of ways that people enter and exit buildings and trying to provide that kind of entrance is uh, something that is, is uh, important to this population and that's why I bring it up. Well then, thank, thanks. Uh, this may then be a question for Peter because it's entirely possible, maybe likely that my understanding uh, of how you know that entrance was envisioned to be utilized, I, I, I might not have a clear picture of it. So I guess the question from a op building operation standpoint, whether you're talking about during school hours or outside school hours, like if there's an evening function, weekend function, something like that, I'm assuming during school hours that that door is not equipped with any sort of like can't buzz you in from it. It's not to be you're sort of funneled to one of the the main in, the main entrance, right? Right. Uh, so Chris, I'm not sure if you're thinking of the door closest to the parent drop off area. That's the kindergarten door. That well, I'm thinking that that door is um, if you're getting dropped off and you have to traverse to to use your wheelchair to get into the building, you're gonna go on that sidewalk for quite a ways before you're under the canopy to get to right. the front door. Right, right. I I guess I just wanted to clarify because the closest door is not an entrance door. We don't have a buzzer or that during any community event, we wouldn't have people come through that. However, there may be an opportunity to rethink this and think about space that's um, down by the gym that's on the ground floor, we have elevators, um, you know, that's would provide a easy access into the Great Hall, which is typically where our community events are gonna be. It's where our concerts, promotion activities, things like that. And so I, I don't know how tight that space is, but maybe there's a potential creating two handicapped parking spaces down around past the pump house and we just simply notice and direct people. They're not parking in the bus loop, but they, you know, go down past into that loop by the, the pump house and then they can unload. And while there's not a canopy there, it's a very short distance from your car right into the building without having to navigate stairs, entrances or, or elevators. Well, that's certainly a thought, um, Peter, and it reminds me of my early days in the field when we had to take folks that used wheelchairs in the loading dock area, because that was the only accessible ways to get them into a building. Um, and sure, there's always a way into the building, but is it, you know, convenient and easily marked and allows for some measure of independence for someone who can probably drive in most cases if it's a parent, you know, with a disability. Um, so I leave this to the committee. I don't want to be the only voice on this. Um, it's, it's unfortunate that um, I didn't see that earlier in the design. So I'll, I'll own some of this uh, uh, late discussion on it. Um, and we can stop talking about it now. Yeah, yeah, Mary. Chris, I don't want you to feel like you're the only voice. I think that you're raising um, extremely important and valid points. Um, and I agree with you. I think it's unfortunate that 
somewhere along the line, it didn't occur to anybody clearly to, to make this happen. Um, and, and I agree with Kathy's statement that perhaps we should at least look into some possibilities. Um, you know, you raise a good point about parents, grandparents. As an educator, I find myself wondering what happens if it's somebody on your staff? You know, we need to we need to make sure that we are accommodating. So please don't feel like you're all alone on it. I think we do need to work together to find some kind of a solution. Thanks, Mary. Um, okay, well, we'll put on our thinking caps and um, see what we can do that is helpful. Um, okay, uh, other other um, things, items to report? Um, Scott or Adam? Okay. So no, quick, and can I get um, assurance or kind of a check on how normal or abnormal what we're going through with the building is in terms of commissioning issues, in terms of um, the uh, whatever threshold, all these little, you know, feel like little things, but there's, you know, it always has felt like a long list of them. Um, and I don't know who's best prepared to do that, but I'd be happy to hear from anybody on it, um, Brian included. Um, but what's the sense of it? Is this normal? Are we suffering uh, unduly? Um, this dish from the dishwasher to the uh, playground stuff, um, foundations to the um, rain garden, um, and on and on. It feels like on and on. I really do wonder in the, the kitchen consumption of electricity, all these kinds of things. Are are these, how normal are these? What's, can you give me kind of a, uh, a mile post? Anybody or sequentially? I'll, I'll start in, Chris. I mean, I think, um, you know, a number of the issues we are seeing on a lot of projects, just from the, the control standpoint, for example, um, you know, energy usage. Um, you know, the one thing we were talking about was just the heat trace on the sanitary lines coming out of the kitchen to keep the pipe warm so the oil in, in what's going down the system doesn't congeal. Um, but there may be a way, or we discussed today about programming the building management system to only, only have that run for a certain period of time. Right now it's running all the time. So I think there's there's some, a lot of those little things. Buildings are so complex these days with their building management systems, electronic systems, how those talk to each other. Uh, you know, certainly I think those things are normal. And then, um, you know, every project is unique. Um, you know, with some of these other issues we're dealing with. Um, you know, I probably defer to Richard and, and Jeff uh, if they wanted to opine on it a little bit further, um, but. You know, unfortunately, there always is a period of adjustment. Um, you know, as, as much as you think a new school, you should open the doors and walk right in and everything is just perfect. Um, you know, unfortunately, uh, that doesn't happen. And there's always a punch list and there's always a period of, of um, you know, coordination, commissioning. Um, you know, we did suffer with, uh, you know, I think some materials that were delivered to the site, VFDs, there's been issues. Um, actually industry-wide with variable frequency drives. Uh, there has been shortages, um, recent deliveries or some of the equipment came with VFDs that um, are now being addressed under warranty. So, you know, some of that catch up that the industry was doing, uh, we may be seeing some components that, um, you know, may, may have some issues that may fall a little bit more under warranty for a period of time. The thing I would add too is that it is not, typical or normal for uh, opening of school and occupancy to have to be delayed until basically the our significant occupancy was in January, largely due to some of the items outside of everyone's control, whether it be the metal deck that we experienced a while back or the dough as unit or all these items. So uh, that's to say that you could say, okay, fine, that, that set it back. Why are we still encountering issues? There is just a, a 
raw completionist standpoint of things where in a typical process with a with a normal building schedule you would have your establish a walkthrough establish a punch list and and be able to just hammer through those items in in one go we've had this sort of bifurcated uh completion to the project where you know the building and most of the site was done but it's the middle of winter, you know, Newfield and their sub consultants or subcontractors can't complete items in the middle of winter for a lot of uh, a lot of things. So it is abnormal in that sense that schools typically don't start operating in April as of when they were supposed to start in, in August. So that just in its very nature is thrown uh, a wrench into the gears, so to speak, on a on a typical process. Okay, I'll, I'll say a few things in response um, to Chris's question. I think that um, there are, are wonderful things about the building that I, I think could, that deserves high marks. Um, but there are some disappointments here. Um, no building is perfect. No building is 100% wonderful. There's always something, always something that is um, either a compromise or a disappointment um the building is late i'm not going to blame anybody for that it was it's late for a number of reasons um in the end you you will be satisfied it takes a while to shake things out just like it does any custom product um this is the first time this building has ever been built uh the first time these kinds of components have come together um and so it's normal to have this kind of um, shakeout period where where things are corrected and things have to be adjusted. Um, personally, I'm pleased with how the building has turned out. I know it's been difficult. I know it's been difficult for many people. Um, but I'm I would not say, Chris, that uh, that this is below average, below you know what we expected. Um, I, I'll, I'll just leave it at that. Okay. Um, okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, then we can move on with our meeting to, uh, there's no um, PCOs, right, Adam? So we can move on to the project invoice? Correct, no PCOs for tonight. Uh, I'll share my screen here. So uh, tonight's invoice packet uh, includes invoices from ACT group uh, to close up the copier scope um, as coordinated through our uh, through Jamie in the IT department, uh, our commissioning agents, Collier's, uh, Hartford Current for the newspaper advertising for the monument sign, uh, and Salco, uh, who's one of the FF&E vendors, um, our Robert Lord, who's again, also a FF&E vendor, uh, TSKP's uh, invoice number 37 and Newfield's pay app number 26 uh, for a total of 214,131.21. So Adam, is, the, is this the end of the FF&E um, invoices or are there more coming? No, there, there are more coming. Um, the, there's, there had there's some items that were back ordered through uh, the biggest FF&E vendor left is WB Mason. Um, they both have a, some components to deliver, as well as some punch, decide, punch list items um, to resolve. Those are being targeted for August, I believe, um, uh, when the when the products come in and the installers can put those in. So there is there are still invoices for FF&E that need to be processed once the work is done. Okay. Chris has a question. Yeah, Adam, could you comment to the um, the amount versus approved amount discrepancies as they occur on there? Are these, well, can you just comment on those? Yeah, absolutely. So in the case of uh, Collier's invoice, for example, um, these three totals, uh, these three items, the 21, the three, and the 275 total this amount, they just go to separate components of our fee. So that's why it's 25, but only this amount is approved for this PO. So that way we can coordinate with finance. Um, the right amount is being attributed to the right cost codes in the general ledger. Um, and then for uh, in Salco, for example, 
um, this amount was the amount balance from their original invoice because uh, I didn't let them get all the money from their original invoice because they weren't done with portions of it. Now they are done, so the balance is being paid out in one regard. I think those are the only two that had a different discrepancy on this packet. Other questions? So Adam, just okay. to confirm, as far as the uh, Insalco fee, you're saying that we had paid them something like uh, $160 previously? Uh, this For this particular invoice, it was a it was a much bigger fee. And then we had retainage held. Um, then they had delivered some component and some additional, yeah, so like $160 came, came due at that point. Okay. Uh, and then now they have wrapped up the rest of their services. Yes. Okay. So that invoice is closed down now. Okay. Just because, yeah, because clearly if you're saying that this represents like the balance still owed, that that's very nearly 100%, but okay. Thanks. Right. Okay. Is there a motion then regarding the invoices? Yes. I would make a motion to approve the invoice packet dated today, June 22nd, including invoices from ACT Group, CES, Colliers, Hartford Current, Insalco, RHL, and TSKP in the amount of $78,232.87 and Newfield's application for payment number 26 in the amount of $135,898.41 for a total approval of $214,131.28. Okay, thank you, Mary. Is there a second? Uh, Chris McDevoe. And all in favor, please indicate. Opposed or abstentions? Thank you, Tony, got you. Okay, so that's unanimous. Okay, then that brings us to an executive session. Oh, uh, no, 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 that's the mouse. Okay, so then that brings us to um, executive session. So I would make a motion that we move into executive session pursuant to Connecticut General Statutes 1-206 and 1-210B for discussions of contract revisions due to project delays and that we invite Superintendent Peter Dart and Town Manager Ryan Aylesworth into executive session. Okay, thank you, Mary. Is there a second? Chris? Kiefner. All, right, all in favor, please indicate. Any opposed or abstentions? Okay, so then um, we will, we can stop the recording. Okay, we are back in open session. Uh, we came out of executive session at 5.06. And Mary has a motion to make. I would like to make a motion to improve, excuse me, approve an increase in the allowance for Collier's project completion and closeout services under PO number 22004101 from $60,000 to $125,000 per their proposal dated June 16th, 2023. Um, also to increase the allowance for reimbursable expenses under Collier's PO number 75679 from 17500 to $20,500 per their proposal, also dated June 16th. And finally, to increase the allowance for town administration support services from Collier's under PO number 2300. 4058 from 5000 to $10,000 also per their proposal dated June 16th. Okay, thank you. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay, thank you, Tony. Uh, all in favor, please indicate. And that's unanimous. So no opposed or abstentions. Okay, thank you. Well, um, then that brings us to adjournment. Is there a motion to adjourn? Uh, Steve, thank you. And second from Chris Kiefner. And all in favor, you can indicate and we'll see you next time. Thank you.